Hi, welcome back to Genesis Custom Sabers. Today I'm going to show you how to drill and tap the hole for your blade retention screw. This is the screw in your blade holder that keeps your blade from flying out. I'm going to show you uh, how to do that basic job, but also some tricks on, uh, on where to best position it when you're building your saber. For today, you're going to need uh, a vise and a drill and the appropriate drill bits. Uh, now, I use generally a drill press with a vise attached to it. If you don't have access to that, I'm going to show you how to do it with just a drill and a vise. You're going to need the, the right drill bits. You're going to need a tap for today. This tap is an 832 thread tap, which is what I use on all my blade retention screws. Um, you're going to need this little beauty, which is a center punch. Um, this comes in very handy. You're going to need some masking tape, um, an X-Acto knife. This is a block of wood. It's a really flat piece of what's called MDF. Um, we're going to use this as a straight edge. You're going to need a, a flat surface to work on. Um, I use a, a caliper like this for precise, me pre precise measuring and, uh, and a Sharpie. So let's get started. Now I'm going to show you what I would do to, uh, to go through uh, installing a blade retention screw in a blade holder like this. It's going to be a little more challenging than a, a blade holder like this. You've got a lot a lot of meat, a lot of depth there for your blade, so uh, you have different options of where to place the blade retention screw. You want it closer to the emitter end for maximum effectiveness, holding the blade in there securely. You've got all these lines to use as guide points uh, where you place it. Um, I use a uh, 832 threaded screw. This one's a stainless steel 832 knurled head uh, screw that I get from McMaster. I believe it is 3 8 in length. Um, I also use these. These are a less expensive version, uh, just a socket head 832 threaded screw. Um, but they're the same thread, and you can get a longer or shorter screw depending on how much metal you've got to go through to, to really achieve what you want. Um, but what we're going to do with this one is I'm going to go through a couple of little tricks uh, for deciding where to put the blade retention screw and how to get it lined up and, and drilled and tapped threaded properly. Now with this one, um, I want to figure out exactly what the center point is. Now with a blade retention screw here, as you'll notice, the blade only goes in about an inch um, on this shallow end. So if you don't do it properly, this can be a problematic blade holder to use. Uh, I would not put the blade retention screw on this surface here because what it's doing is it's pressing the blade against, against this inside surface where there's less metal. You want to put the blade retention screw here so it's pressing the blade against the surface with more metal that's going to be more secure. Um, for this particular design I'm actually putting a screw here for looks and I'm going to put a screw here for effect. So uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do that. Uh, what we're going to do is try to find the center point. Now if you can see with uh, with this particular blade holder there's a little dot that's been machined there when it's been CNC machined at the Custom Saber shop. I don't know if all of them have that but it appears to be dead on center. Uh, so I have a cutting mat like this. If you can, you can get these at uh, these Olfa cutting mats at Walmart or, or wherever, it, they're great because they have a lot of lines on them. So I can you're going to need a flat surface for this. So I'm going to place my uh, my blade holder where it appears to be in center, lined up with these lines, and that helps me to determine where the exact. Especially if I look at the the area here, helps me determine where the exact center point is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a Sharpie. These are great because they uh, they don't rub off. But uh, using methyl hydrate, you can easily remove the mark later. So I'm going to mark what to my eye looks like dead center. I'm going to see if it lines up with that machined hole. What I want to do now is I've got uh, a 5 8 MDF. This is a very flat wood that's going to kind of work as a slide rule. And what I'm going to do is, using my Sharpie, I'm going to line it up on this, and it's going to it's going to slide on this like my slide rule. I'm also going to lay this flat against against the cutting mat, and I'm going to rotate this until the the pen tip lines up with the mark that I made, and it butts up nicely against the wood. And now that this is flat, actually, there's something under there. Let's do it this way. Yeah, there's, you don't want the wood to rock. So well, now that that lines up with that, that line, I can just do this. And what I've got now is I've got a nice line that, uh, that goes, because this was laid flat and I was pressing on it, it's a perfectly straight line that, I don't know if you can see it in the video, that actually lines up with that little dot. And that gives me my center line. Now what I'm going to do next is, uh, is I'm going to, for the rest of the purposes, I'm going to put some masking tape around this. I don't want to put the masking tape on this before I do that line because it, it makes the, uh, the surface a little uneven and it can rock. 
So now that I've got that kind of reference line, I'm going to masking tape. So now that I've got uh, masking tape around the part, masking tape is a great tool um, because it protects the part while you're working on it. It allows you to draw on the surface and mark things that you want to mark. Um, so I'm going to go back over and I'm going to just to uh, just to accent that line that I've done on the masking tape. Make sure that that's straight. Yeah, it is. So now I can see that. Um, so that's my reference point for the top. Now I'm not going to drill in here today. I've got to get some other measuring to do. What I want to do is I want to drill on this side. Um, but what I want to do is figure out exactly where the opposite point of that line is on here. And here's how I'm going to do that. I'm going to use, uh, again, masking tape. And I'm going to uh, line this masking tape up with this, with this line. So perfectly like that. And then I'm going to go around to what I think is about the halfway point. Go a little bit past that, flip it off. And I'm going to eyeball where I think about the halfway point is with my finger. I'm going to take the masking tape off. I'm going to place it down on my, on my cutting mat surface. And I'm going to use the lines again here because they're handy. And uh, I'm going to use a straight edge and a knife. And I'm going to, it doesn't really matter where exactly I do this, I'm going to make another straight edge on this masking tape. And if it loses its stickiness, that's fine. And here's what I do. I line it up again on that line. I wrap it around. Now it's probably a little too long, but I'll show you what I mean anyways, because even if it's too long, I'm going to use my Sharpie and I'm going to draw a line where that masking tape is giving me that marker. And then I'm going to take it off and I'm going to do it the opposite way. And what I'm doing is I'm getting two lines that are exactly the same distance away from this top line. And it's going to overlap the other line that I just drew. So now I take the tape off. I've got two lines. Now I could have gotten them closer. But what I'm going to find, if I measure this, the exact point between these two lines, that's the exact opposite axis from this line. It's directly opposite. So I'm going to use my, uh, my caliper here. And I'm going to uh, double check and measure it and make sure that that's the same distance. It looks like I can go a little bit further that way. So you eyeball it, make a stronger line. So that's, that's my midpoint. Now where I'm going to put my blade retention screw is as close as I can to this edge. So I'm going to go right about there. So I want to punch a, a little marker that's going to be using my, my nail set device and my center punch. So I'm going to use my wood again to kind of keep that secure. I'm going to put my center punch direct, directly where I want. Again, the masking tape help, helps hold that little pointy part exactly where. A little tap from a hammer. It doesn't have to be much. And I have a little hole exactly where I want to drill now to make my uh, drill and tap for my blade retention screw. Now for this next part, it really is uh, best to have a vise. I really don't know how you do this without a vise. Um, it doesn't have to be an expensive vise, something solid like this. I use a, a folded up piece of uh, cloth, old t-shirt. You can use soft jaws um, because you want to put your part in your vise, but aluminum is soft metal. You don't want to mark it up by squeezing it too tightly in the vise. Even with soft jaws, you can do that. But what I tend to do is uh, fold it up, I think there's four, four ply. Um, that's the top. This is the part that I'm going to want to I'm going to want to do my blade retention screw in here. Okay, let's place it this way. So what I want to do is I uh, place this carefully in my vise, and I want to I want to get this centered so that this is facing directly up. So I mean, you can even go so far as to use uh, a level. So I've got one here. You can go as far as to use a level to get that get that part leveled there. Um, I'm just going to kind of eyeball this. And uh, what I do like to do is to make sure that this point where I'm drilling is going to be exactly between the, the vise jaws. As I use, use my caliper there to measure from the corner of the vise directly to the center and make sure that, that I'm centered so this hole is dead center. I'm going to double, triple check again, measure twice, cut once and all that jazz. So what I want to do now is I want to drill a pilot hole. So I'm going to use my drill. And uh, I've got a, I think this is a 1 16th or a, a bit, so it's, it's not, a, it's not a, as big as what I'm going to need. Oh, I almost forgot. Safety first. Even the pros 
almost forget. I mean, I'm going to be going at a low speed, so nothing's probably going to fly up. But you always when you can run the risk of a, of a of a drill bit snapping or something. So, as you recall, I've got that nice little punch hole in there. Now the point now is to keep my drill as straight as possible while I'm drilling. With aluminum, you don't need to go very fast. I'm going to drill straight through. I don't need to put a lot of pressure on it. Let the drill do the work. If you put too much weight on it, then when it finally breaks through, you can snap your drill bit and it'll be stuck in there. So now I've got a hole. Next thing I want to do is I want to measure. This is part of the value of doing a pilot hole first. It makes the actual next hole a lot easier. But I take my drill bit out. I slide it in there. And I, get, and I look at it. It gives me an idea of how, how well did I get it straight. Did I get it straight up and down? Is it straight on my axis that way? And it looks like I did actually a pretty good job. If I was to discover that it was skewed, that means that my next hole, I can correct that a little bit. So uh, I want to move to my next drill bit and then I want to drill straight through and then we'll get to tapping. Okay, now I've drilled through with my 1/8 uh, drill bit because I'm going to be using an 832 tap. So this is the tap and the tap handle. It's, uh, it's really secure in there. Uh, I also want to use some, uh, this is machining oil, uh, and you want to lubricate the, uh, the cutting surfaces of your tap. Um, some people I've heard even use olive oil. You can look up different ways to do this again. I'm not a professional. I'm just showing you what I do. Well, I guess I'm a professional, but not a professional tapper. So uh, again, what you want to do is you want to make sure that you are straight up and down. And you want to take your time and just get the tap started. It should grab if you've got a fairly decent tap. It should grab. When it grabs, you can kind of let it go. You don't want to drop these on the ground. These are very brittle, um, high... Uh, high carbon steel, and they can snap if they hit the hit the floor, the concrete. Um, also, if you do if you're tapping wrong, too, putting too much force on it, you can snap it off, and then they can become really problematic to get out. With an 832, it's a pretty thick, pretty beefy tap. Smaller ones like a 632 and a 440 can be can be trickier. So, as of my first few rotations, making sure that I'm pointing straight up and down, because if you don't get this right, then your screw's going to be off. It's going to look kind of funny. Doing well. So every once in a while what you want to do is you want to back it off a quarter of a turn and later on we'll back it off half a turn. Again, I'm not putting a lot of force on there. I'm letting the tap do the work. I'm going to back it off. When you back it off, the metal that you're cutting gets to clear those channels and it cuts better. If you feel your tap getting really gummed up and really tight, you might want to lubricate it more. So basically I do this process over and over again. You know, one full turn around, back it off a bit. Another, another half a turn, back it off a bit. And you slowly and carefully tap your hole and thread it. Now I want to mention here too that uh, generally this isn't the way I do this. I've got a vise um, that's a two axis vise that's attached to my drill press. And the drill press of course presses uh, the drill bit straight up and down. So I use that, uh, the drill press and the uh, two axis vise for all my tapping. But most people don't have, a lot of people don't have a drill press and a two axis vise, uh, although they're not a very expensive tools. I think the drill press I got used for 60 bucks. Um, this may be more what, you're, what you've got, so I'm trying to show you how to do this in your garage or basement at home. Now as you can see I'm done. It taps out, so I'm going to take my tap and a, and a wire brush and I want to gently clean off all the metal that's in there. It's always good to take care of your tools before you put it away so it's nice and clean and ready for the next use. And of course I've got my 832 threaded screw. I want to just the threads line up. When I'm threading something I always like to back it off a little bit and get it to seat and then it screws in. That's going to be my blade retention screw. One last thing that I like to do is uh, pull away the, the masking tape. This is just a countersunk, countersink bit. Um, you can get it for woodworking or whatever. It's just a very inexpensive way of, and I don't even, you don't even need it in a drill. It's just to insert it in your hole and put some pressure on it. And just turn it a few times from a few different angles. And the result is that just kind of cleans up the edge of where your screw goes in. And just makes it, makes it clean because sometimes with the, ta uh, the tapping, you get bits of metal that stick up that can cut your finger and be sharp. It's just a, just a way to kind of clean it up and make it a little bit 
a little bit nicer looking. Well, I hope that's helpful, showing you where to place your blader tension screw and how to properly install it so that it does the job, looks good, and uh, keeps your blade from flying out and going through someone's window. So again, thanks for watching.